I have always considered myself part of a movement, part of a canon sea. I wish I had time to explain everything I did. If you want a world without war, without poverty, without hunger, and without the stupidity of government, this is what you must do. You must declare all the earth resources as the common heritage of all the world's people. A lot of people think I'm a utopian. I believe in a perfect world. I don't. If I were to design a city that was wonderful, that city would be a straitjacket to the kids of the future. They'll design their own cities. There's no final frontiers. A vision of efficiency, sustainability, and intelligent planning can lead us into a marvelous new world of unlimited human potential. This vision could be a showcase of what the world can be in our cybernated age. Wherever possible, geothermal energy can be harnessed. Geothermal power offers the possibility of an abundant source of clean energy. This source alone could provide enough energy for the next thousand years. In some instances, ships could serve as floating automated plants, capable of processing raw materials into finished products while en route to their destination. If I had a modern factory, and I had a new machine that produces a hundred times faster than people, I would gather all the working people and say, you now work four hours a day. Your pay will be increased, and you get a three-month vacation rather than two weeks off. But they don't do that. They downsize when these new machines come in. They get rid of you. That means they don't care. Science and technology could be used for human betterment and the restoration and protection of the environment serving as an example of the intelligent application of a systems approach. People are only interested in the bottom line, money. As long as that's dominant, you're not going to have a decent world. The word decent was invented by people that live in scarcity. And scarcity is what boosts price up. So if the Kimberley diamond mines in Africa, those of you that didn't know that, they burn tons of diamonds every year to keep the price up. If automobile companies had to service their own cars, I can assure you, you know what a cannon plug is? Multiple outlets. That would be pulled out first, two handles down, the engine comes out, you shove it in courtesy hands and lock it and take off. Why hold up a whole car for three days to change the three dollar car? The other people don't have to service anything. That's your burden. We don't want any government, any kind of people in government, me nor anyone else. What we want is a government that works. So the government of the future will have its tentacles into transportation, agriculture, everything, so you get a holistic picture of what's happening. People can't do that. They're being surpassed. I'm not for that or against that. I'm just telling you, it's not a machine takeover. Machines don't have those feelings. That comes from Hollywood. You can't have democracy and freedom unless the president were to get up and criticize another country. Then we invite the prime minister of that country to give his point of view. Then we invite the prime minister of Sweden. He says, they're both full of shit. This is how I see it. So you can't have a democracy. Unless you have every point of view. Environment shapes behavior, mannerisms, facial expressions, everything. I ran cowboy pictures for little girls, about ten of them. Ran for about two weeks. The little girls were walking around like this after two weeks. If that's all you see, do you understand that? If you brought up in France, you say, Vive la France. What happens in different countries 
you pick up dialect, mannerisms, facial expressions, and you think they're your own values. You believe in free will. There's no such thing. Creativity is taking known elements and putting them together in unique ways. Everything is made of known elements put together in unique ways. Don't use good, bad, right, wrong. Now, when my kid was four years old, he came to me and said, Daddy, the wheel came off my toy car. And I said, so it did. I threw it in the garden. And I picked up my magazine and I'm reading it, but I'm watching it. And that lower lip goes, oh yeah. And he starts crying. He says, you're throwing it away. I said, I'll get your baby toys where the wheels don't come off. He said, well, maybe I can fix it. Then I reached for it and gave it to him. And he's trying to get the wheel on. Four years old. He got it on in a few minutes. Then I picked him and said, wonderful. How did you do that? He said, I'm not that little. And by doing that alone, rewarding all creative bits of behavior, you strengthen self-confidence. Larry King once asked me what I thought of Catholicism or religion. I said, it's a wonderful idea. When are they putting it into practice? I never found it manifest. I never met a Christian. There's no such thing as love. How many of you are satisfied with everything you've ever done in life? I see no hand going up. So sometimes you like yourself, sometimes you don't, sometimes you hate what you've done. So love is a fluctuating thing. If you marry somebody, sometimes you love them very much. And sometimes you say, how did I get into this? Well, who the hell is that jerk? So marriage is fluctuating love. It's not a constant. If you come to understand these things, you don't have to go to a psychologist. And any psychologist or psychiatrist that tries to adjust you to this system has to be a pinhead. If we use science and technology with human and environmental concerns, it could be a vivid future showcase of the human potential when working together to preserve the greatest gift we have, the resources and beauty of our planet Earth. In the final analysis, we are one people and share one planet. The enemy of mankind is what we have to fight. That's heart disease, cancer, cystic fibrosis, hurricanes, tornadoes, earthquakes. Problems common to all people is what we have to fight, not kill one another. That's a primitive society you live in. We are not civilized yet.